Good afternoon YouTube and welcome back to the channel and episode two of Aprilia RS125 project. So in today's video, we're gonna have a look at what the engine's doing. It's such a big unknown as many of you pointed out in the comments with everything else we've seen. It's just not gonna be worth the risk trying to fire it up. So I haven't got a receipt for it, but the word is it was built by PGME. It's got a few bits on it, but I've got no receipts. So yeah, let's... Um, start taking a rebuilt engine apart. So as you can probably hear, I've got a bit of a cold. I've been away in Canada for two weeks. Awesome time, but being on an aeroplane, oh, I've sort of picked up some sort of dirty man flu. So you're gonna have to bear with me <coughs> coughing and struggling a little bit. But I thought, yeah, do you know what? It's raining outside, can't do anything on the cars. Let's take the engine apart. So before we get to dismantling the motor and having a look what's going on inside, I'd just like to say a big thanks to you guys that reached out in the comments. A good few suggestions and some people who got in contact and had some bikes potentially on offer for me. Problem was, it just wasn't what I wanted for a lot of the stuff. I think for me, the best one I saw was from a chap called Jay who got in contact. It was a full-blown race bike, had some running issues, but as I'd already bought this motor, it just wasn't a viable option. But in hindsight, turning back the clock, I probably wouldn't have bought this and just gone bottle his stuff. But yeah, it is what it is. Um, again, still looking for a rolling chassis. Ideally, race body work and a rolling chassis of a blown engine would be perfect. But um, yeah, thanks again, guys. Really appreciate it. And apologies, the build's moving a little bit slower than I'd like. Pleasures of being a part-time YouTuber. But yeah, let's uh, have a look what's going on with this motor. The first thing I wanted to check was that the engine actually had a VHM cylinder head, which is the uprated aftermarket version. Obviously I took the seller's word on it, but until you actually take that water jacket off, it is a little bit of an unknown. Pleased to report she was there and all in good order. So initial impressions look really good. Obviously I can see a brand new crown of a piston in there, no carbon build up, so it's pretty obvious that's a spanking new one in there. Using a pair of mole grips on the old sprocket just to rotate the engine, I then run the piston down and can confirm we do have a good bore as well. Initially, I was just going to have a quick look at the top end, but I thought, you know what, let's take the carb off and have a look what that's like inside as well, because I have no idea what the jetting is. With the cylinder head removed and the carburetor as well, we now get our first look inside, and hopefully the camera will focus on that. It looks like we've got some nice cross-hatching honing on there. It even looks like the ports are okay. So what I did some research on a few of you guys mentioned in the comments, is the Mateka, Mateka barrel, whatever it's pronounced, is actually not a bad bit of kit. It's the piston rings that are a problem. So it looks like it's had some port work done because I was advised that it can be pretty rough. Again, let's see if we can get the, the torch on there. I don't think it's gonna focus. But it has had some work done. It's cleaned up. It's definitely um, not raw. Hopefully you can see that there. Um, anyone let me know in the comments, is that standard? Again, there on the exhaust port, looks pretty clean. I mean, initial impressions are things are actually look pretty good on this block. Um, so I'm not as concerned, but we do need to get the casing off because I assume doot, doot, we've got no clutch in there, which I didn't even think about at the time when we collected it. But yeah, I say we've got to do a squish test as well, which we'll test. It's sort of a, a method to check you're not running too high a compression. I think it's 0.8 millimeters it needs to be, but we'll... 
we'll do that when we uh, take the casing off and start putting it back together again. In order to remove the casing, the first thing we need to remove is the gear selector arm. When I collected the engine, I did ask the seller if there was any oil in there and he said it was dry. So good news, I wasn't worried about having to drain the block, but what I wasn't expecting was all the bolts to be hand tight. So I knew something hadn't been put together as a finale on this build, but pleased to report when the cover came off, the clutch was actually intact. So I assume what I've got in the box of parts is simply a spare clutch or a clutch basket that either was faulty or that wasn't used. I also removed the other cover on the generator side just to have a quick look and see how things were on this side of the engine. Bizarrely, it doesn't appear to use a gasket on that side, but at the same time, I don't think it's got any oil circulation in it. So if anyone knows in the comments if there should be a gasket there, let me know. But from what I could see in the Haynes manual, it was a dry setup on that side. Using a piece of solder, I then made the decision to carry out a squish test, because again, I didn't know what base gaskets had been used. Before I started that test, I thought, you know what, we need to check that the cylinder head has actually been bolted down and torqued up, which I'm pleased to report, it had been. So I'm pretty happy with everything I've seen so far. I did a quick torque check on the cylinder head to crankcase bolts. Everything seems in good order. So what we're gonna do now, the final thing I'd like to put my mind at ease with is a quick squish test using a little bit of solder. Now I believe we're looking for 0.8 millimeters for the squish and we've got some just over, it's like a 1.05, I think I saw a clip there on the uh, GoPro that I'll include. So it should be perfect for the job. And essentially, there's two methods of doing it. A lot of people in the old school days would make like an L shape, put it through the spark plug hole, compress it. But reading online, it seems like you can get a little bit of piston movement in that. So it's worth doing it in what is like a T uh, shaped piece, which will go from either side. So what we'll do is we'll do that now. Hopefully uh, this is the correct method. And um, I mean, look, it's all looking pretty good so far. I really never got any doubt at the moment with uh, P Jeremy's work, but I'm just gonna check it because the last thing we wanna do is have it too high a compression, especially with our VHM head, and uh, start destroying pistons. That's so definitely not what we want on the first run. But yeah, let's um, get that underway now. With my T-piece of solder ready to go, it was carefully placed into the cylinder. Now, you do need to torque everything up as if the bike is in a finished state. So it's 30 newton meters in a cross pattern on the cylinder head. So I'm gonna to need to do a little bit more research because from what I'm seeing here, I mean, I don't know, the VHM head is obviously not gonna work with the standard measurements in the Haynes manual. So from what I can see, I think I've got too thick a base gasket in there, who knows? But yeah, any of you guys played with the VHM head, let me know in the comments, what should we be looking for? Shall I bring the piston up to the TDC? and fill it with two stroke oil and measure the fluid in there or see if we can do it that way to accurately work out the compression ratio because to me yeah it just doesn't seem uh doesn't seem right that we're at like 1.5 1.6 which is like double the amount but again might be because of the vhm head so yeah carry on putting the rest of it back together but i've got a feeling this will be coming off again 
Everything looking pretty good in there. I was happy to put the cases back on. So on the generator side, it was five newton meters. On the clutch case side, it was 10 newton meters. Now these are obviously not original bolts. I'm still undecided as to where we're gonna keep them, but they are stainless and they held the torque fine. So that was all back together and the gaskets in place. It was then time to have a quick look at the carb. And when I say quick look, it's not what I was expecting in there. When I purchased the engine, the previous owner advised that everything was ready to go, including the carb. Well, as you can see, the top side came apart relatively easy, but look inside the float bowl. What on earth has been left in there? And I can also tell you, it didn't smell very pleasant either. It was at this point I realised I really need to get myself an ultrasonic cleaner. I've been putting it off for ages, I don't know why, they're not massively expensive but they just make life so much easier. But still I thought, you know what, I'll have a quick go at cleaning everything down, inspect if anything's damaged because then obviously I'm going to need to order some more parts. But even though it was pretty grubby in there, potentially left with old fuel, I don't know, I've never seen one dry out and gum up like that, it was still good to get everything cleaned up and I gave the float bolt screws a clean as well. But not ideal, really need to be replaced placed but they certainly look night and day difference from before and didn't lose my fingers. So as you probably saw there, the float bowl was in quite a state. I mean, really, I think it's time I invest in an ultrasonic cleaner, but I got 99% of it out and it's looking a million times better than it was an hour ago. Um, I mean, I've cleaned everything else up as you've probably seen from there. There's in that gasket kit, there was some Del Auto gasket, so I can replace the float bowl one and the one that sits below the main jet. So for those of you that are experienced with the RS125 running a 34 mil carb, what jetting do I need to be running in this? Because I get the feeling this carb wasn't on this bike. So I don't know what the situation is with the fueling on this. Um, obviously, we want to get it running. So we want a good idea. So we've got, what's that there? 155. Uh, excuse the GoPro. 60. And... B36 on that one. So, yeah, I mean, look, I've obviously got the um, oil pump either because the bike's been set up to run pre-mix, which is fine. I don't mind that because obviously a bit of rotating mass saved there and I don't do a lot of miles or I won't be, so I don't mind running pre-mix. But, yeah, let me know in the comments what jet in should I be running for this setup? And then, obviously, 
the other big one and I've got to try and work out what's going on with this VHM head and the squish and try and work that out so yeah any of you experts out there on the RS125 which I am not have any constructive uh, criticism to throw in let me know down below I thought it best put the engine all back together. It wasn't particularly time consuming, but I thought, you know what, it's gonna be potentially weeks, maybe months before anything happens again with the motor. It's best to keep everything, one, together, and two, sealed and clean, so we don't get any contaminants in the block, especially as it's lovely and fresh in there. I think the next big push for me is probably gonna be moving on to actually sorting out the bodywork. The exciting stuff, making it actually look like a bike, and give myself some motivation to keep moving with the project, because, I am really struggling with motivation on this one because it's really, really difficult to get half decent parts without paying an absolute premium for junk. So I'm going to call that a wrap on episode two, engine, well, I think it's good news. Let me know in the comments. Do you think it all looks okay? I'm pretty happy with it, to be honest with you. Obviously, the carb was a bit of a mess, and there's still a bit of an unknown on that squish um, regarding the compression on the cylinder head. So, yeah, hopefully uh, some RS125 gurus can get in the comments and uh, reassure me that everything is fine. But from what I've seen, yeah, looks all right. I mean, I'm glad it ain't a 10 grand engine. Excuse the GoPro there again. But, uh, yeah, until next time, thanks for watching. If you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe and like button. It always helps. Cheers, guys.